Welcome to Authentic Church's online experience. We are so glad you guys are here. We're going to sing a couple songs, and we'd love it if you just join in and sing along with us. Sing it out. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Victory. 
Church, I'm so thankful to be a part of such a generous church with our time and our finances. If you want to partner with us in this ministry, you can text the word GIVE to 815-566-8696, or you can send a check to 902 West Custer Avenue in Pontiac, Illinois.
God has given us weapons to fight our battles, weapons to fight the enemy, to fight temptation, to fight fear, to fight anger, to fight all of these things that might well up inside of us. He's given us those weapons. One of those weapons is worship. We've just done that. We've just declared our faith in God that he will triumph. He will take what the enemy can use for good and he will use it for our good. He won't let the enemy use it for evil. But one of the other weapons we have is prayer, talking to God and talking to God on behalf of one another. So what we wanna do right now is fight that battle. We wanna take that and we want to fight. So we're just gonna offer up a time of prayer. We're gonna pray up here and we want you guys to pray at home. And if you have something that you need people to surround you and do battle with you, then please put that in the chat so we can fight this battle together. You don't have to do it alone. God is on your side and Authentic Church is on your side to fight with you. So church, let's do battle right now in prayer. Hey church, we're so glad that you're here this morning. I hope worship encouraged you. That's one of my favorite things. My wife is a worship leader, so kind of biased, but we're glad that you're here. You guys have been incredible. Have you noticed something different? We are in the church. That is awesome. So we are celebrating. If you're watching, come on, celebrate. Put some hand claps in there. We got some people here celebrating with us. We're so glad you are here. We're moving forward, church. We're gonna get through this valley. God has been so good. Real fast, my name is Sean Jensen. I'm the pastor here at Authentic Church along next to my beautiful wife, Liz. And if this is your first time, first off, thanks for even tuning in. We're glad that you did. If you could help us out, grab your cell phone and type the word guest to 815-566-8696. Now we're starting a brand new season, a brand new series called Cabin Fever. I'm pumped. I'm excited. I really am full of faith that God's going to heal so much in this series. And by the way, we have a huge announcement for you, but I'm going to tell you at the end of this experience what that is. So hope that you stay tuned because it's really good. Let's look in James 1. We're going to be in James 1. I'm reading out of the message translation. The message translation is a translation that's kind of a paraphrase. And I just love how they word this. James was uh, the brother of Jesus. He's writing to a bunch of Christian believers who are being persecuted. So they're going through a hard time. Uh, going through some pressure, and this is what he says. Consider a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. Now listen, I'm pretty good at showing my fake colors, like really good, but it's pressure has a way of bringing out my true colors. You know what I'm saying? Like if you take a pressure of a hammer to your nail, You'll find out real quick what's inside of your heart. Uh, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. I pray as we start a new series called Cabin Fever, that our hearts will be open to receive. And whatever you want to heal, whatever you want to do, we're so excited. We're so full of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, in this season, I've watched a lot of YouTube. I don't know if you guys have watched any YouTube, but there is a YouTube channel. That's right. It's called Dr. Pimple Popper. Has anyone ever heard of, Do everyone in here has heard of Dr. Pimple Popper. First off, it's disgusting. It's shocking. But here's what's even more disgusting and shocking. It has six and a half million subscribers on YouTube. 
Guys, we have almost 700. Help us hit 700. That's right. It's a shameless plug. Go ahead and subscribe for YouTube. But the cool thing about Pimple Popper is the satisfaction that, you know, they push pressure on pimples. And I don't know what it is about wanting to watch nasty stuff come from a pimple. I'm sorry your stomach is queasy right now. But isn't it true that when you put pressure on something, what's on the inside is going to come to the outside? And I think in this season, we have realized some things that have come to the outside. I don't know if you have. I know I have. First off, some good things. I laid a whole floor in our baby's room. Had no idea that was in me. Had no idea. I know my dad, Wade, helped a little bit, but I go up there every day and just admire my work with my cup of coffee. Like, this is awesome. Some of you have been homeschooling. You didn't know it was in you. Some of you become amazing cooks. Some of you have learned guitars and musical instruments. During this time of pressure, you've seen some true colors and true talents. But how many people know if we see good stuff, there's been some stuff that maybe has come out during this quarantine that we're not so proud of. Anybody in here? Anybody on here? And we can raise a hand and say, I'm not so proud of some stuff that's come out during this quarantine. And that's why we're starting cabin fever. Check this out. Cabin fever means this. Negative symptoms resulting from living in isolation or a confined indoor areas for a prolonged time. Negative symptoms resulting from the pressure of isolation the pressure of staying in a place for too long. I've looked at some of these symptoms and maybe you guys have some. I've seen, I've seen some on this list that I do. These symptoms include irritability, stress, anger, anxiety, bitterness, depression, lethargy or exhaustion, food cravings. My wife is pregnant. She blames it on the pregnancy. I think it's a little bit of both the cabin fever and the pregnancies. What are some symptoms maybe that you are facing? If you're listening, just maybe internally think about some things that you've noticed that you maybe aren't so proud of. You can maybe drop them if you're comfortable. What are some symptoms you have seen by being in isolation and in quarantine? That's cabin fever. Now, a fever is a sign that something out of the ordinary is happening inside of our body. So when we see these symptoms, the depression, the bitterness, the anxiety, all these things that are happening, it's actually a symptom of something that's actually not good inside of us. When we talk about bitterness, maybe there's something that's happened inside of us. When we talk about anger, we can look at the symptom, but it's telling us that there's something that's out of the ordinary that we were not created to be like. When we look at irritability and stress and anxiety, it's actually telling us there's something out of the ordinary happening inside of us. So we can't ignore these things. So if anything, in this season, cabin fever, the quarantine, if you're anything like me, has shown me some things that I have not been proud of. I don't know about you guys. I've seen some stress come out. I've seen some anger come out. I've seen some irritability. I am not proud of some things that I have done. But one thing I know, that's just a symptom. And God wants to take care of what's actually happening in our heart. So if you're anything like me, and maybe you're thinking like, man, I'm not proud of who I've become during this quarantine. Maybe you feel ashamed. Maybe you feel like you're beating yourself up. Can I just tell you there's good news that you don't have to be ashamed and you don't have to be content because here's the good news. The church is a hospital. It's not a country club. The church is a hospital. It's not a country club. You came to the right place with the things that are hurting you. If you feel like some things have been coming out, this fever, these symptom fevers have been coming out, you've come to the right place. Now, hear me out when I talk about the hospital and the country club. Uh, recently, I don't want to put them on blast, but you know, I've been to the Elks Club a couple of times. We love the Elks Club. They help a lot of people out. I am not bashing the Elks Club. I love the organization. However, I'm just trying to make a point that they're not like the church. And here's why. Uh, I went in there once to see some friends, and this was actually really funny, and I had my hat on. Now, I did not know going into the country club that there is a dress code, that you have to be a member, and that if you walk in with a hat, people will look at you like you stole a stuffed animal from a little kid. And so I remember walking in there and people were giving me a look and finally a lady had the courage to walk up to me and say, <clears throat> can you take your hat off? And I was like, oh, I felt so like, you know, naked, like vulnerable. Like I feel like everyone's looking at me because I knew what everyone else knew is why is that dude wearing his hat in here? I guess you weren't supposed to do it. Fast forward, I went to go golfing once and I had a tank top on. I did not know that you can't go golfing at the club with a tank top. I didn't have the right attire. I didn't fit the right part to fit into this club. And I think there's a lot of times that people come to our church. If we're honest, maybe you feel like this. Maybe you haven't even come to our church yet because you feel like that you have to fit into this country club. That I want to remind you the cool thing about our church is that 
It's not really how you dress and how you smell and how you look. That's what country clubs look like. But the cool thing about a hospital is we all realize that it's not how we talk. It's not how we pray. It's not that that actually makes us fit in. What makes us fit in is our hangups, is our mess ups, is the things that we realize we're sinners in desperate need of a savior. So if you're watching online saying, I will not fit in here, I have one thing for you. Do you fear? you fit in here. Are you sick? You fit in here. Have you messed up? You fit in here. Because one thing we realize that brings us all together is we all have fevers that need to get to a doctor. And so this is not a country club. This is a hospital. I'm glad that we have a hospital for people to get well. But don't take my word for it. Look at Jesus. Jesus said this. You're like, Sean, that's good preaching, but I don't see any scripture. Okay. Luke 5. Luke 5 is the story about Jesus in the gospels. And Jesus is actually hanging out with misfits, the ones who wore the hats in the country club, the ones who wore the tank tops, the ones who didn't talk like Jesus, the ones who didn't act like Jesus, call them tax collectors and sinners. The people in the church called the Pharisees were watching Jesus go to these parties and he's going, what is he doing? You, they, they, these guys are scum. The word says that they call them scum. They, they don't look like us. They don't talk like us. They have sickness. They're contagious. Stay away from them, Jesus. And I love what Jesus says in Luke 5, 31. He says, Jesus answered them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call those who think they are right. I have not come to call those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. Jesus was always about building a hospital, not a country club. If you maybe feel like you don't talk the way that church talk and you don't act the way that church talk, I can tell you it doesn't matter what brings us together is our fevers. You know, here's one thing I thought was really cool about hospitals. I was, as I was unpacking this, and this is kind of like a conversation I want to have. Have you noticed hospitals have a way, it's very intriguing, of bringing so many different types of people together? It doesn't matter how much money you have. If you have a fever, you're going to the hospital. It doesn't matter if you have a lot of money or no money, if you're black or if you're white, if you're an addict or if you're a pastor, if you're a thief or if you're an officer, it doesn't really matter what these things are because here's the truth of the matter. If you're a pastor or a Puritan, if you're promiscuous or a liar or if you're loyal, if you're an addict, if you're a prison guard or you're the prisoner, one thing the hospital reminds us is we can all get fevers. And if we can all get fevers, we can all come to the hospital to find the doctor. And I came to tell some people online today, The doctor is in the house and he is ready to take care of these symptoms and these fevers. So don't be ashamed of what you're noticing in your life. Go ahead and bring your fevers. Go ahead and bring your aches, bring your pains, bring your wounds, bring your sickness, bring them to the hospital and watch Jesus heal you. Who's grateful in here that Jesus healed you from some things that God has healed? I've been healed from some things. If you're watching right now and you've been healed from some things, come on, give God some glory that you came to the church and it was a hospital. So don't be ashamed. You're like, man, I've been ashamed of some stuff that has come out in this season. I'm glad you're watching. You've come to a hospital, not a country club. And it's the very fear that actually makes you fit in in this church. Because we all know one thing. We would not be here if it wasn't for the doctor. We would not be here if it wasn't for Jesus. And if we could remind ourselves for people coming in who are sick, don't be so scared that you're going to catch what they have. You see, we all have something that we're wrestling through, and we are never going to be a church that runs away from the contagious. That's why I love looking at the medical workers in this season. They are on the front line. I wonder if God's asking us to be a lot like those medical workers, that it doesn't matter what they come in with, what they smell like. You might get it on you. You might need to take protective measures, but when they come in, I'm here to say, whatever you need, I'm going to give you the antidote, and our antidote is Jesus. So let's not run away from the contagious. Let's run to them and give them the hope hope of Jesus Christ. Everyone say, the doctor is in. First Peter 2, 24, this is what it says about Jesus. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. By his wounds, you are healed spiritually, mentally, emotionally, 
physically. I am that pastor that still believes today that Jesus is in the healing business. If it's emotional, if it's spiritual, if it's mental or physical, I believe God is bigger than any type of symptom and disease we have. He is still the healer. And I believe in this series, he's going to heal some people from some wounds that have lasted for about 10, 15, maybe 20 years. Today's the day of healing. Today's the day that God wants to heal you. So run to the hospital. Come back to church online. When we open up the doors, get to the hospital. This is in the country club. We know you have hangups. I have them too. I need the hospital to continue to get better. So if you've been having cabin fever and you're ashamed of what you've done, don't worry. There's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Bring your fevers to the hospital. But I do want to warn you. Here's the caveat. You ready for this? Jesus is a little bit personal. Jesus gets, per- he's a great doctor, but he's a little personal. He gets into our business. Have you noticed this? Like when you come to Jesus, you start, like, people always say this, I don't understand. I, I feel like I'm doing worse now that I came to church. Before I did, like you, you, you came to church, right? And you were like, I don't get it. Now I feel like I'm doing worse. No, 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 we're not doing worse. The doctor's just revealing what was already inside of us because he wants to heal us. And what we do is we don't come back to church because we feel like, well, I can't go now. I came to church and these things are coming out. That's why we come to church. I would tell you if you're watching online, I got to get my stuff together and get my fevers worked out before I come to church. And I would say that's the reason we need to be at church so that we can get these things figured out with the doctor. Now, Jesus asked personal questions. That's what I mean. He gets personal. So I'm just going to ask you, if you're going to bring your fevers to Jesus, just remember he gets personal. He begins to show us our soul, our attitudes, and it gets ugly sometimes. And it gets ugh. And if we're not careful, we think he's doing it to shame us, but he's always doing it to save us. He's always doing it to help us. I thought about how personal doctors ask questions in this season. Uh, My wife and I, I can't remember if it was Avery. We have two daughters. We're expecting a third daughter, pray for us, in August. And uh, and one time, when you're about ready to give birth, they give the the mom a, a questionnaire. And it's just to ask some personal questions. You know, are you sexually active? Duh, right? Like, are these things that were happening? What's going on? And so we're going to talk about that in a second. But one thing that was funny was she was filling out these questionnaires, and I was sitting on the couch preparing. She gives it to, this is funny, she gives it to the nurse. She's like, here. And the nurse looks at the list, and she's going through it, and she starts looking at me like this from a distance. And I'm like, what is going on? Because you could just tell the, at, like, the atmosphere changed. Like, you're just like, I thought we were cool. Are we cool still? And she's like looking at it and she just glares and she slowly backs up to my wife and goes like this. And she starts whispering and I'm watching going, what is going on? Like, is everything okay? Is the baby okay? And I'm just like, I've been feeling really uneasy about this. And I find out she, and Liz goes, oh no, that's fine. I just missed that one. Come to find out of all the questions, she skipped over the one that asked, do you feel safe in your home? I'm like, babe, they're probably about ready to call some cops to get me out of here. She skipped the one. And so the whole time they were asking, like, do you need us to get him out of here? Do you feel safe at home? And she thought it was the funniest thing. And I'm sitting here going, oh, my gosh. Like, are you serious? I thought it was hilarious. But how many people know that doctors ask personal questions? Like, if you've ever been asked this question, are you taking illegal drugs? Right? Those are vulnerable. Like, what if I am, right? Like, what do you, what, what do you want to know it for? You know, and then it's like, do you drink? And if you drink, how much? Well, some of you are like, well, just this morning. It's, it's 8.30 in the morning, guys. Like, come on. The quarantine's got you guys like got like that. The glass, like, uh, what is it? I've seen those like glass bottles, the wine glass bottles that actually plug into the bottle to make it look like you're just drinking one glass of wine, but it's the whole bottle. We can't do that anymore, right? Like, but the truth is, do you drink? How much do you drink? Well, that's personal. You don't need to know how much I drink. It's been a tough season, right? But here's another one to ask. Are you sexually active? And you decided to bring your parents the day they asked that, right? Like, that's embarrassing. It's personal. But why do doctors ask questions? Here's the truth. Great doctors ask great questions. And the truth is this, because it leads to great diagnoses. So many times we bring some fake stuff or some symptoms, and Jesus will ask questions to really show you what's going on in your heart. Because think about it. Do you drink? How much? Oh, well, that might be why your liver is acting up, and we need to check your liver. Because we found out if you have been having an alcoholic problem, then maybe the things happening on the outside is what's going on with the liver on the inside. 
Are you maybe sexually active? Well, we understand that there's some things in this world that can cause that, you know, with diseases and things like that. So sometimes some things on the outside, when we ask questions, we'll diagnose what's happening on the inside. This is why Jesus gets personal with us. He gets personal with us because he's a good doctor, not a bad doctor. And we need people in our lives who can be good doctors, right? We need some people in our lives who can ask us the real questions and say, why did you act like that? Why are we going through these things? Why? Because great questions questions lead to great diagnoses. And Jesus did this all the time. Why do you have such little faith? If you look throughout the, the Gospels, Jesus rarely made statements. He always asked questions. Why do you think? Because he wanted to expose what was going on inside of us so he could heal it. Jesus knows what symptoms we are dealing with with the cabin fever. He knows the greed. He knows the bitterness. He knows that there's some things that are shocking me. Can I tell you? It's not shocking to him. He's not shocked by our misfitness. He's not shocked by the things that are coming out, but he does want us to be healed from it. Questions help us reveal what is really happening in us. Now, here's, what, here's like some homework time. During cabin fever, for the sake of this series and where we're going, we're going to have to do some homework. We're going to have to take some time this week, and we're going to have to start asking ourselves some questions. We're going to have to start noticing when we get angry, why am I getting angry? Where is that coming from? When we get bitter, why am I getting bitter? Sean, why are you getting short with your wife right now? Why are you even short with the kids? So we don't take time to process that. We just kind of go, well, I did it. And we look at the symptom. But I think what Jesus wants to do in this season is he, he doesn't want us to come through this quarantine in vain. If anything, I think he wants to use this quarantine to press, to say, man, you do have some division inside of you. Man, you do have some pain inside. Now you do have some wounds inside of you. And it would be hard to go through this season of pain and not see it serve a purpose. What if God is using the quarantine, not that he brings sickness, but what if he's using it to get rid of our sickness? Let me say that again. God doesn't bring sickness, but what if he's using the quarantine to get rid of our sickness? I love that. He is pressing. He's using a pressing season not to shame us, but to get us to this hospital so he can heal us. You would not be ashamed of going to the hospital when you have a heart attack. So why are we ashamed of coming to the church when we have things that attack our hearts? He wants to heal us from these things. So take some time this week. Here's your homework. And ask yourself if it's greed, if it's bitterness, if it's resentment, if it's anger, if it's malice, whatever's coming up. Maybe it's addiction, if it's eating, maybe for some of you at home by yourself, it's pornography. I'm just being honest with you. If these things that you think are going to satisfy that really don't satisfy, because if it satisfied you, you wouldn't be watching it five days a week instead of one day when you said, I can just handle it one. Why? Because it doesn't satisfy. It just, it just keeps filling and you're not getting anywhere. But God's saying in the season, I want to reveal some sickness, not to shame us, but to heal us. And I'm so grateful. Can I just be honest with you? This is encouraging to me. I'm realizing that God wants me to be a better husband. He wants me to be a better father. He wants me to be a better pastor. I found out in this series, now that I'm not around people, how much of a people pleaser I was. And God's been teaching me that, hey, it's easier than when you don't have to please people when you're at home. And he's teaching me how to overcome that in a, in a time of isolation. Do not let this isolation and your cabin fever go to waste. We're going to get through this. We're going to come to the other side. We're going to get all the way through this. God's going to help us. But let's let this pain serve a purpose. Let's ask him to heal our sickness. It won't be the coronavirus he's healing us from. It might just be the bitterness. It might just be that. So let's ask some questions this week. Let's take some time to write down what we are going through. So I just want to tell you, come to the hospital. Come to Jesus. He's not going to look down upon you. He was here for the tax collectors. He was here. So if you are ashamed by the symptoms coming out, Jesus is here with open arms saying, I'm the doctor and the doctor's in the house. But remember, he's personal. And he's personal because he wants to heal you. But the last thing is this. Don't forget, healing begins where concealing ends. Healing ends our healing begins where concealing ends. Let's look back to the scripture when I talk about how the sick need a doctor. It says this, Jesus answered, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. Did you notice what Jesus said? He said, I'm looking for those not who act righteous and they walk around concealing their sin with good deeds 
and good songs. That's what the Pharisees did. He called them whitewashed tombs. You think I'm intense sometimes? Jesus looked at people in the church and said, you're like that tombstone right there. It looks pretty on the outside, but there's dead things underneath of it. And how many times, as this pastor can be honest, there's some dead things going on in my life and I spray perfume on the gravestone. I'm just like, I smell good, right? But deep down, it's rotting. Deep down, I have bitterness. Deep down, I have hurt. And God's trying to say, no, I'm not coming for those people. I'm coming for the people who say, I got bitterness. I'm a mess up. I need to find freedom. We don't stay in this place, but we know that God's going to get us out of this place. He goes, I'm looking for people who know they are sinners. What? I'm looking for people who don't conceal. I'm looking for people who reveal. And when we can reveal these things, he can heal these things. Let me say that one more time. If we can get the courage and faith to reveal really what's going on inside, then Jesus can begin to heal what's going on inside. But how many people know that it's the scariest and the hardest and the most vulnerable thing? I think it is easier sometimes to tell people to start a business than to tell someone that they're going through sin. It really is. I know for me, it's hard to be vulnerable. But here is the word for us that I believe it. I, I believe God spoke this in my heart. God said this, let the concealing end and let the healing begin. That's it for our church right now. It's time to let the concealing end. And from this day forward, the healing is going to begin. If you need to be healed, it's time to stop concealing. And I am preaching to myself. And I love this story about Jesus. We see it actually in scripture. Matthew 12, Jesus is walking through. He's healing people. He's the doctor. The doctor is in. And there's this guy who's going through some sickness. And I love this story because this is how we're going to have to conceal. We have to reveal what we're trying to conceal. Matthew 12 says this, then Jesus, starting in verse nine, went over to their synagogue where he noticed, I love this, he noticed a man. Jesus notices even when other people don't. Jesus noticed a man with a deformed hand. So he's walking through the crowd and in the crowd, he notices a man with a deformed hand, which shows me that God notices what's going on inside of us. He sees it. Jesus fully knows us, but fully loves us. Think about that. He already knows what's inside of you, and yet he still sent Jesus to die for it. He already knows what we're going to make the choices today. He already knows what we're going to do, and yet he still sent his son to die. So Jesus notices a man with a deformed hand. He sees it. He sees the deformity. He knows what's really going on and what's really eating at him. I can just imagine, I don't know about you, but he might have been, You know, just don't want anyone to see that one, like, right? Like, how many times we can, you know, I want them to see this, but I don't want them to see this. Like, I I want them to see my Instagram page, but I don't want them to see my family. Yeah, I I want them to see uh, uh, my talents and my gifts, but I don't want them to see my anger and aggression at home. As a pastor, one thing I wrestle with, I'm an eight on the Enneagram, and I'm not speaking that over me, but one thing I wrestle with is control. And so I can snap at home like that. And what's cool is on stage, I can let you know, like, man, he is all about good vibes and preaching motivation and encouraging and opening us up. But at home, what I have to wrestle with is knowing that in a moment, I can snap on my wife. And what I do is, I want to show the church this, but not this. And what I have found out, if we never go to our groups, if we never go to our churches, we never go to our godly friends and reveal this, this will never get healed. And Jesus says this in Matthew 12. He notices the guy with the deformed hand. And in verse 13, he says this. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored just like the other one. Have you seen God heal something in your life? He wants to do the same thing in your sickness. He wants it to look like the other one. Hold out your hand. And listen, the man held out his hand. He revealed How embarrassing sometimes is it to show everybody what's ugly, to show everybody what's mangled, to show everybody what's sick. Because when we come to church, we think like we have to have it all together, right? Because that's what this is. Like we're we're a country club. No, 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 no. God wants us to come and say, I see that hand from day one. I did not bring you here to have one good hand. I brought you here to have two good hands. He wants to heal us as long as we what? Hold out our hand. I don't know what your hand is, but this is what the point of this series is. It's about taking a few weeks to reveal some hands that have been deformed that we are going to start reaching out as a church and say, God, I've noticed this in me. I'm tired of concealing it. 
I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to get out in the open because if I can reveal it, you can heal it. If I can reveal it, God can heal it. James 5.16. Remember, we started with James. He says this as well. He says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. What does he say? Confess. What does confess mean? Open. Talk about it. Let people know, yeah, you did yell at your wife. Let people know, yeah, I did look at this. I know it's a, I'm not perfect, but I want freedom from this. Begin to confess. What is he saying? You want to actually be healed? Then you got to reveal what's going on. I know it's scary to open up your hand. I know it's so hard and you start sweating when you have to be open and real because they may shame you. And maybe you've been shamed before. Maybe that's the case. Maybe you don't want to open up because the last time you did, someone kicked you out of church. Maybe the last time you did, someone shamed you. And here's the truth. Do not let someone else's ignorance prevent you from your healing. Do not let someone else's bad decision prevent you from a good decision. It's time to confess and reveal, even if it's embarrassing. I want to remind you this. The temporary pain revealing the issue far outweighs the permanent pain concealing it. The temporary pain revealing the issue, and when it's hard and it's tough, it outweighs the permanent pain of concealing it for our entire life. And it actually filters into our family. God wants to do a lot of healing in this series. I believe it. I believe if you're watching online, if you are comfortable right now to begin to reveal those things, say, here's some bitterness, here's some anger. Maybe right where you are watching this on your screen, just have a moment with God and say, God, I have been mean. I have not been kind. I've been greedy. I have been full of fear and not faith. It's okay to admit these things. Bring it to the doctor right where you are right now. If you feel comfortable, drop it in the comments too. Why? Because I'm gonna address those things. If you have some symptoms, please put them in the comments because that's what we're gonna talk about in the next few weeks. We're gonna actually begin to break down these things and give you the antidote. Maybe you deal with bitterness. Maybe we'll talk about bitterness and give you the antidote. Maybe it's jealousy. We'll talk about it. Maybe it's anger. I've been uh, uh, of learning about that. Well, that's what this series is about. We're going to start addressing these symptom fevers and giving us the antidote. We're not going to look at the outside. We're going to start asking questions and start digging on the inside. But for this series to work, we have first got to reveal what God is doing. It would be such a tragedy for us to go through this series and we held it in the entire time. It's time to bring it out. Tell your group. Call your friend who's in the church. Call someone you trust. Whatever it is, begin to reveal why. Because God's about ready to heal some people. And he wants to do a lot of healing in this season. No shame, no condemnation. This is a hospital that Jesus has built and he's ready to heal us. I'm encouraged. I'm super excited about this series because I'm all about healing. I'm all about seeing people walk in freedom. So before we end, maybe you're watching right now. You said, Sean, I want to be healed. The first step to being healed is to invite the healer in the doctor, Jesus. You see, we have people online who still deal with symptoms, but they're following Christ and he's healing them. But if you have not invited the doctor in, you'll remain hurt. You see, first he wants to heal you spiritually. You see, when we sin, we are separated from God, but he has brought us back into life through Jesus who paid the price. Before we can be healed physically, we need to be healed spiritually. Because here's the truth. We can be healed physically and still be on the wrong direction. God much rather take care of your state of your soul than the state of your flesh. He can do both. But if you do not have made a decision to follow Jesus, you are separated from him. And it says that our destination is hell, but not today. Today, you can invite the healer in. Today, you can invite Jesus in. You can invite the doctor and say, Sean, how do I do that? By believing he died for you. That's it by believing that by his stripes you are healed, that he rose from the grave. This isn't just folklore. This actually happened so you could be brought in relationship with God. So let's pray together right now. If you need to pray that prayer, pray with me this prayer. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I have sinned. You have not. Forgive me. I choose you today. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's celebrate all those people who made that decision. If you're in the comments, celebrate. You made the best decision of your life. And if you did, I'm telling you, everyone is rejoicing. Angels, all of our church, go ahead and text FOLLOW, F-O-L-L-O-W, to that same number, 815 
5668696 and we will get connected with you and we want to pray with you and we want to celebrate and get you the resources you need. Church, I am so excited for this series. Cabin Fever is going to be one for the books. But remember, this homework this week, ask yourself the questions. Begin to reveal what's really going on and watch God begin to heal. Confess, not just to yourself, but to God and others and watch him begin to heal you. Let me pray before we dismiss. Lord, we thank you so much for this message. Thank you for giving us the start of cabin fever. Thank you, Father God, for bringing out not just good stuff, but even the the not so good stuff so that we can be healed. I pray for ultimate healing in this series. I declare right now for people watching who are going through symptoms of addiction, and I believe if it's a drug addiction, if it's alcohol addiction, I pray for those going through anger addiction and all these things. I believe that, Father, that in quarantine, you're going to heal them. I believe you're going to do a work right where they are right now. We don't have to wait till we're back in the doors for you to start healing. You are a God of the impossible. So meet us where we are, Lord, and begin to heal as we reveal. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Hey, stay tuned. We have a huge announcement for you. Welcome back to another incredible announcement segment from yours truly. So today we are going to be doing some classic accents. First up, we have Surfer. Man, it really stinks that we have to stay inside right now. It makes it really hard to catch some gnarly waves. But I'm just thankful that we have authentic groups where people can encourage and pray for you in this season. So if you want to join one, click the link down below to select a group that fits your needs. Um, I've never actually met a surfer, if you, if you, if you can't tell. So. Next up, we have Northern, eh? Oh, hey there, did you know that each week we have two separate experiences for your kiddos? One experience is for pre-K and under, and then the other one is for kindergarten through fifth grade. So while you're enjoying your experience, your kiddos can be learning about Jesus. Or maybe you can take 15 to 20 minutes for yourself, you know? Take a quick power nap, make some dinner, whatever you want to do. Okay, next up we have British. Hello. Make sure to keep an eye on our Facebook page so you can see any updates that we might have. Plus, you can watch our live at lunch Monday through Friday. It starts at noon and it's only five minutes long. It's a quick encouragement for you and your family. Now that's all I have for you guys. So we're going to go ahead and pass it back to Pastor Sean for the big announcement. All right, church, I know you've been waiting for this moment, the big announcement. And one thing we say here, our vision is that we look like Jesus. And scripture says that Jesus came to seek and save those who are lost. So everything we do is to fulfill that great commission, to go after everyone we can. And so we've been praying during the season of isolation. You have been doing amazing being a contagious church, even while we've been doing church online. And we love church online. Like, we're going to keep using it. It's a great tool. We believe that God's going to use it to reach more people. And as a part of that, we have been praying of what we want to do moving forward. As the governor keeps opening up little glimmers of open doors, we're going to take them because we believe that gathering together as a people is important. So on June 7th, we will be having a drive-in church out back. We are super excited, super pumped. Some of you say, what is drive-in church? Well, if you've ever been to a drive-in movie, it's drive-in church. We'll have people who will park you out back here. You'll be able to tune in on your radio, the whole experience. We'll be out here with our worship team. I'll be preaching live out here. So you'll see us. You'll see other people. We will have to stay in our cars. We will have to stay in the bed of our trucks because we want to make sure that we are looking like Jesus. And as we are moving forward, we have done that. We have already talked to the chief of police. We have been cleared to go. So June 7th at 10 a.m., Drive-in church, out back, and listen, we need squad members. We need volunteers to help with this. So we have a form for you right now in the comments and also in the description for you to be a part. So if you're like, I want to get back to the building, this is your opportunity where actions speak loud in words. If you want to serve in any capacity, just please fill out that form and we will be reaching out to you and getting you on a squad to help with that. We love you, church. We cannot wait for more Church Online and Drive-In Church on June 7th.